we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Hello brethren, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Today we're talking about fight for the crown of life. Let us pray. Lord, it was it our own making for us to be here. This is 100% your plan to bring us into this world without our negotiation. We know we are not here for nothing. We are here for a purpose. And that purpose is designed specially by you that we should come and conquer. Use the dominion you have given to us. Occupy till you come to take us home. Lord, many of us have been wounded because of fighting. Many of us have been so oppressed to the point that some have looked back, some have fallen aside. But we put our trust in you, O Lord, that you alone will see us through. We put all our hope and trust in you, O Father. Please help us. Almighty God, please help us to fight this fight to the end. I pray that you speak through me to your children. May those of us who hear be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. It is the understanding you have about life that detects to you how you live your life. If your understanding about life is wrong, you will get everything wrong. If you have a true understanding about life, you will know how to succeed in life. Where the meaning of life is unknown, abuse of time and the purpose of existence is inevitable. We are on earth, but a lot of people do not understand the principles on which this world runs. A lot of people don't also understand that the world we live in is a battle is a battleground. The the earth is battle earth it is a battle ground it is not a place for enjoyment god does not give people the crown of life to wear on earth the earth is a passage to the place of eternal rest we all are pilgrims we are on a pilgrimage we are on a journey to the place of eternal rest. But a lot of people do not understand that before we were born, two kingdoms have been at war. There was war in heaven. And a kingdom came out of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of darkness broke out of the kingdom of light. The kingdom that broke out from the kingdom of God was thrown down to this earth. When we get to Revelation chapter 12, verses, verse 4 following, we will understand better. So from the moment Satan was driven down this earth, became battle earth. This is the theater where Satan carries out his evil plans, his evil plots. If you do not understand, you will not be able to overcome. Imagine 
soldiers not knowing that they are soldiers. If we lose the consciousness of the fact that we are in a battleground, then it will become difficult for us to overcome. Imagine you becoming a target of the enemy and you are not aware that an enemy even exists. That is a very dangerous risk. How many of us are aware that we are in a battleground and that we need to fight and that we are not just fighting for nothing but we are fighting for the crown of life. You have a crown of life that awaits you. I too have a crown of life that awaits me. Let's read the text. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. This is Paul. When he wrote this, he came to a point in his life that he understood that his time of departure was near. And he had this strong assurance that, yes, the time is close and I have fought even to the end. And I know that a crown of life has been laid aside for me, a crown of righteousness the crown of life. These are the same thing. The crown of righteousness, the crown of life. The crown of glory. This represents the same crown. It's talking about the same thing. The crown of righteousness has been won by me and it is waiting for me. Wish everyone that long for the appearing of a great king and God will receive on that day when we shall be told well done good and faithful servant look at what he said again in first Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and as profess a good profession before many witnesses. We are called upon to fight the good fight of faith. How many of you know that you are called to fight and not called to enjoy, not called to celebrate and not called to gather material prosperity? It is very painful that the goal of Christianity has been misplaced Today, the church, according to majority of people, is a solution ground where you have problem, you run there, and then you get solution. That is what a lot of people think about the church, but that is a misplaced priority. Today, we see a lot of men of God pose themselves as powerful men of God but powerful without holiness. And they, they project themselves as saviors. Oh, we are sent to save these people. We are sent to bring solution to you. But in course of doing that, they have succeeded in distracting the average Christian of this generation. Jesus Christ came to deliver us from our sins. He did not care so much about the prosperity of the flesh. He cared firstly 
for the salvation of our souls. That is why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This is what we are commanded to seek. He said the other things shall be added to us. Today we see a lot of people who are not saved. A lot of people who have no understanding of what salvation is. And what they are after is prosperity. Material prosperity and nothing else. As a matter of fact, a lot of Christians have been brainwashed to believe that we have to prosper first here on earth before we talk about the prosperity of the soul. But this is putting the cat before the horse. Many preachers today now tell us that everybody, uh, holiness preachers are talking about going to heaven, going to heaven. Won't you enjoy here first? As a matter of fact, many of them jokingly say that, well, let's enjoy here first before we talk about heaven. No. We have to be sure of this first. Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Where unto thou art also called. Let us fight the good fight of faith and lay hold unto eternal life. Listen, those who went to Jericho were told that this city you don't have to take anything out. Destroy everything. Destroy everything. It is about the victory now. Fight for your life. Fight the good fight of faith. This is not coming from the lips of someone who never fought. This is a soldier of Jesus Christ. Who fought. After fighting, he's telling us that we also should fight the same fight of faith. We should lay hold on eternal life. Why do we need to fight for eternal life? Why, why even fight? Why do we even need to fight? Listen. Eternal life is free. Salvation is free. It is a gift from God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Anyone who believes has the gift of eternal life. And this gift is not by work. It is by faith in the only Son of God. It's not by word. This is the free gift of God through grace. We just need to believe. But let me tell you this. This is where it gets tough. Imagine a situation. You are in a battleground. And then you are given the most precious stone in the world to take home. <laughs> Jesus Christ said that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who finds a field. And in this field, there is a precious stone hidden in this field. So he went, sold everything he had, and bought the field. Remember I said, this is battle earth. This is a battleground. This is battle earth. Imagine you being given a bag of diamond in a battleground. In the war front. And two things are involved. Number one, you have to survive. And then number two, you have to take this bag of diamond home. So it's not just surviving, 
you have to take these precious stones. You have to take them home. How will you fight? How will you fight? I watched a video recently of Mr. Beast. He dropped a Ferrari, $300,000 Ferrari. And there were about, is it 30 or 20 people surrounding it? And he said, if you lose contact, if you remove your hand from it, from the car, you are disqualified. So the first day passed. You know what that means? You can't even go to ease yourself. Right there, they ate food, they drank. And you know what it means? When you eat and drink and you are not permitted to go to the toilet, it means that place becomes your toilet. And there are cameras everywhere watching them. Some of them slept and lost their hands. It came to a time he said, now you're going to put one of your fingers, one, and then they raised it up. It remained two of them. They raised it up. And one of them was screaming. He said, I'm tired. My finger is aching me. It's, there's so much pain. Until he dropped. And it remained the last guy. He won it. That is a Ferrari that can miss the road and jump into the sea, into the lagoon, and is gone. Or it could catch fire. It could develop electrical fault, catch fire, and get burned to ashes. It could have accident. Yet people decided to be resilient, to be patient, to persevere. Urinate on themselves. If I there was this guy who said one other person urinated on him, they slept there, they ate there, they urinated right there because of perishable Ferrari. Imagine if they had been told, just put your hand on this stone. And then just remain there. There is a prize for you. There is a reward for you. And then the person remains there. They remain there without actually knowing the cost of the prize they are going to receive. I mean the worth of the prize they are going to receive. A lot of them will easily get discouraged. This is what it is to many Christians today. They don't know how much the crown of life costs. They don't know how much the crown of glory costs. They don't know the value. Let me tell you, if a preacher keeps telling you every day about earthly prosperity and continues to, to display his wealth before you, Every day you keep hearing testimonies of those who have made it. Every day you keep hearing different testimonies of people who are prospering. I tell you the truth. One day you will forget about the reward that God has prepared for you in heaven. This is the reason why you see a lot of people flocking to church. But only few of them are concerned about eternal rewards. People today, even when they want to give, they want the reward now. They want likes, praise of men on social media. I had a lot of struggle when I was, when I started my charity organization, especially during the COVID-19. So I used to go buy food and bring them home and share to people. 
Only a few times I snap the food stuff and put them online. I was telling myself, do I need to snap people and put them online, people who are hungry and you're giving them money, giving them food? Why put them online? <laughs> There is this guy who always talked to me, he said, you don't need to be using your money to run a charity organization. Just put what you are doing online. Put them online, let people be, when they see your good works, they will contribute. I, he, he preached to me a lot of times and he told me, there's difference between your personal charity and a registered charity organization. This is not your personal work. I had to take it to the Lord in prayer until one day he told me, you have your personal charity to do, which you have to do in secret. Then again, you, so long as you are open to public donation, and the people are not there with you, those who donate, they are not there to see the work themselves, you hold them. The obligation of transparency and post these things online. But I also understand that there are some embarrassing situations. Someone who cannot eat food and then you give the person a few dollars to buy, to buy food and then you post the person online. That's totally wrong. If you buy food and they are sharing to a lot of people and there are those who donated towards the food bank and you are showing it to the world and encourage people to give to give for instance flood um, victims so you were doing it and posting it online and encourage more people to give so that you can help more fine but what do we have today i know why i take some time to explain this because there is always a place to draw the boundary. A lot of people, they are given to the poor on the street. Their personal charity, they post it online. Any little thing, they post it. I do charity. As a matter of fact, it's my tradition that when I'm traveling, when I'm going out, when I go to the market, I try to give something, no matter how little, to someone. You should do it too. Whenever you go in out, as you take your salary, set something aside. Don't just sow seeds into the lives of men of God. Don't just give your offering. There is a place of charity. Do charity. And don't broadcast it. Your neighbor has no food to eat. Give to them in secret. And your father in secret will reward you. But because of likes, shares, followership, I mean follows, subscribers, a lot of Christians are no longer practicing the doctrine that surrounds charity, arms giving, because they want their reward now. We have been brainwashed to the point that when a lot of Christians hear the truth, the truth now looks like lies. Wake up, lay hold on eternal life, and fight for the crown of salvation. Fight for it. Look at Revelation chapter 12, 7 to 9. And verse 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels 
were cast out within. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. What are the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea? For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that, is, that he had but a short time. So the devil was cast down to the earth. This ground is a battle ground. And we are receiving life, the gift of life here. And the devil and his fallen angels are here with us. They want to stop us. They want to deceive the whole world. So there is need for us to fight. You don't receive salvation and go home and start sleeping. It is free. Yes. If you receive a bag of dollars, millions of dollars, in the war front, you have to fight to get it home. But the good news is that the Holy Spirit is here with us. The Word of God is here with us. Even the Bible says, verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the, by the word of their testimony. And listen, they says, And they did not count their lives to the death. They... We are ready to lose their lives. Hebrews 12, 11, uh, Hebrews 12, 4 says, And ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. That means in course of fighting against sin. Situations will even arise that require Losing our lives in course of fighting against sin. That is the truth. There are two kingdoms at war. And we have to stand to the end. Remember I said, why do we need to fight? Number one, I said we receive the free gift of life in the battlefield. In the battleground. And we have to fight to survive to get home. Two, there are two kingdoms that are constantly at war. Number three, Satan lives here on earth. This is his, the place he lives. The earth is his address. He moves to and fro, seeking for someone to devour. Then we are also, number four, we are fighting against sin. We are fighting against death. We are fighting against the world. A lot of people don't know that we are fighting, we are fighting against sin. We are fighting against the devil. We are fighting against death. We are fighting against the world. And when we finally succeed, when we overcome, we will receive the crown of life. The number five reason is because the crown of life can be taken away from us. Just like receiving a crown of diamond. Sparkling crown of diamond in a battlefield. Look at what Revelation chapter 3 verse 11 says. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. The crown of life can be taken away from us. The one who gives us this crown is the one that is telling us that we should hold fast that crown of life. We should fight for it. We should fight to the end. Christianity is not a joke. We are soldiers of Jesus Christ. But a lot of us do not have this understanding that we are soldiers of the cross. 
Listen to Matthew 11 verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. By force. The violent take it by what? By force. Are you joking with your Christianity or you are actually fighting? The kingdom of God suffered violent. These are the very words of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God suffered violence and only the violent take it by force. Are you fighting? What are you facing right now? Are you facing troubles? Are you facing problems? Are you among those who have given up? Listen, there is a crown of life that is awaiting us. Fight for it. Jesus Christ has given us the grace. Endure to the end. And when you endure to the end, you will receive the crown of life. James chapter 1 verse 12 blessed is a man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the lord hath promised to them that love him please endure to the end we don't have time anymore if you haven't received any blessing in this world that makes you comfortable to enjoy life to the fullest. If you have, on the other side, if you have received some blessings and you are enjoying life to the fullest, please don't make the blessings, the earthly prosperity, your primary goal. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Remember the danger of not fighting at all. If you don't fight, you will lose out. There is nothing like sitting on the fence. You can't sit on the fence. Christianity is a dangerous kingdom. The moment you declare yourself as a Christian, the whole world turns against you. A lot of those the devil is not fighting is because he has them in his pockets already. They are like handkerchief in his pocket. He can pick them and squeeze them at any time. Your life is constantly in danger. That is why the Bible says that we should put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. And fight. Don't sleep. Be sober. Be watchful because the devil, the adversary, is roaring, is seeking for someone to devour. Stand firm to the end so that no one takes your crown. Let us pray. Lord, it has pleased you to call us into your kingdom. Lord, strengthen us. Help our faith. Help us in our infirmity. Help us to be obedient. Just by obeying you alone, life, the race, will become easier for us. But if we disobey, we will find it difficult to overcome. Help us to Jesus. Help us, Almighty God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We declare that the peace of God that passes all understanding will guide our hearts in this battleground. We know also that, Lord, you are always there for us to protect us, to deliver us, to fight for us. You that started this good work of salvation in us, you will also bring it to a glorious end. Lord, for it is you who live through us. Lord God, we ask that you help us to overcome so that on the last day, you will tell us, well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, we believe that you can help us and see us through. This is our declaration. Therefore, see us through, Lord. As many that are weak, as many who have not accepted you, Lord, touch them. Heal the sick. Heal the weak. Strengthen the weak. Strengthen their bones. Strengthen their spirits. Those who are facing different challenges, Lord, please help them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may you never look back. May the Lord help you. Father, I pray for as many who have been supporting our ministries and our charity organization. Those who have been supporting me, Father, please bless them. Overthrow every hardship in their lives and release your blessings upon their lives. May the Lord cause you never to lack. May it be well with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching. Please share this video with someone and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video and comment so that this platform can recommend this video to other people. We also encourage you to give. Please, please support us. Support our ministry and also support our charity organization. Schools have resumed. Please support us. This is first time. The load is the financial burden is heavy. Please support us. Thank you for all you doing i pray that the lord will continue to see us through and guide us until we enter the kingdom god bless you bye bye we hope you were blessed by this message for more information visit our website www.hosannadavid.com email us at info at hosannadavid.com God bless you.